welcome to all of you today we are going to discuss the topic that is periodic classification we you know different elements are being discovered by scientists and they gather different information about the properties of elements and they face different difficulties to organize the elements to remember the elements and their properties systematically so there is a important challenge for the scientist how to arrange the elements in a systematic manner so that the properties can be measured systematically different scientists were involved in the classification of elements there dubonniers newlands lodermeyer mendeleev henry mosley they have given different periodic laws for the arrangement of elements last first we will discuss the important periodic laws that is dubonniers of triads dubonnier in the year 1817 as a german chemistry arranged the elements in systematic way this his table is called dubonniers of triads according to dubonnier elements are arranged in increasing order of atomic mass the uh, atomic mass of the middle element is the average of atomic mass of other two elements that means he made different triads containing three elements in the triad the characteristic of triad is the atomic mass of middle element is the average of atomic mass of the other two during his classification of these elements he has taken some selected elements which were fitted in the triads and the main characteristic that is atomic mass he considered for the increasing order of arrangement of elements in increasing order of atomic mass what are the drawbacks of this dubonniers of triads dubonniers could identify only few triads that uh, the elements all elements were not selected for the triads he was not able to prepare triads of other elements and the elements could not be arranged in the form of triads all elements were not arranged in the triad forms very low atomic mass and very high atomic mass elements were not selected for the triads so these are the some drawbacks and defects of dubonniers of triads but he opened the eyes of scientist how to arrange the elements taking the particular properties second law that is newlands law of octaves he was a english chemistry in the year 1865 he arranged these tables this table is called newlands law of octaves and that uh, according to newlands elements are arranged in increasing order of atomic mass in such way that the eighth element every eighth element is the repetition of first that means he are he arranged in such way that in a tabular form every eighth element is the repetition of first that means the properties of first element is similar to eighth element similarly the properties of ninth element is the properties of second one that he arranges in the first row so using the musical notes musical mm, that octaves of musics that sa re ga ma sa re ga ma pa dha ni these seven musical notes when you start again sa will come the first 
So a repetition of sa after eighth, that is eighth position in the same. Similarly, every musical notes will be repeated after the eighth position, ninth position, it will be repeated again and again. So accordingly, he arranged the elements increasing or increasing order of atomic mass and the what are the uh, that uh, drawbacks it was applicable to only lighter elements not for heavier elements and the so after calcium the first and the eighth element did not have similar properties that means after calcium elements were not uh, fitted in the table so these are the some drawbacks that means max almost all elements that were discovered in that time were not selected in the tables so this is the important drawbacks of uh, new lens of octaves then third scientist that is ludermeyer german's chemistry in the year in the year 1869 he also arranged the elements by taking atomic mass is the main properties and comparing atomic mass with atomic volume of the elements he found that when he arranged the uh, when he plotted a graph between atomic volume and atomic mass he found that that the similar properties of elements are coming at the same place of the uh, table that means you see sodium potassium rubidium are coming at the tip of the table similarly your magnesium calcium and strontium also coming just below the tip below the tip of the graph so that means the elements which are similar properties are coming in the almost are coming in the same place of the graph that means um, periodic uh, if elements are arranged in the increasing atomic mass it will also follow the properties like atomic volume atomic size like this that's why he plotted different properties or taking different properties with atomic mass in this uh, arrangement uh, he also uh, faced some problem that uh, the table was incomplete and uh, he supported uh, study of various physical properties such as atomic volume atomic size etc related to atomic weights so it was very difficult to study the properties of uh, elements on the basis of their uh, on the uh, with compared to atomic mass so it was difficult different behavior uh, are noticed when different properties considered um, with atomic mass that's why this law was not accepted by modern scientist then next is mendeleev law it was uh, very important also he opened the eyes of other scientists modern scientists to how to arrange the elements in a tabular form russian chemistry uh, mendeleev in the year 1869 he uh, formed the table that a mendeleev periodic table according to this table the physical and chemical properties of elements are the periodic function of their atomic weights that means he arranged the elements in increasing order of atomic mass that the physical and chemical properties of elements and uh, depends upon atomic mass with increasing atomic mass the property changes during his um, uh, construction of table he kept some vacant space uh, that space uh, that white uh, white patches indicating the vacant space of the elements which was which were not discovered in that time and uh, the, he uh, mainly what are the characteristic of this table let us see that the periodic table is composed of seven rows that is seven periods and uh, um, 18 vertical columns called called groups eight groups eight groups and seven periods and each group is also divided into sub columns sub groups as a and b each group divided into two groups a and b mendeleev started his work uh, that taking 63 elements Uh, were uh, placed in his tables and the main important thing is that that the formula for hydrides and oxides of the elements uh, indicating the valence of elements as per the formula the valence of element was known 
then the elements were arranged in different groups as per the valency that means as per the formula of oxides and hydroxide that is a very important characteristic of the table is he arranged the elements in order of the, their valency the uh, the common valency the common formula of oxides and hydroxide were placed in the same group this is the important characteristic of the mendelik tables then what are the merits that uh, he gave more emphasis the similarity in properties not the increasing atomic mass some cases he considered the properties not the increasing order of atomic mass in the arrangement iodine though the smaller weight than tellurium but is placed later as it resembles more to chlorine and bromine as iodine is more resembles to chlorine and bromine so it is placed with chlorine and bromine iodine is placed with chlorine and bromine not with tellurium so on the basis of properties he arranged he in the, sometimes some cases he did not consider the increasing atomic mass then correction of atomic mass during his arrangement he also corrected the um, atomic mass of the elements then prediction of new elements he also um, he was uh, predict he predicted some new element which will be discovered later and he placed some gaps to fill up the uh, this discovered elements like he using some word that is eka prefix word eka he use the word eka 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 boron means aluminum eka aluminum means gallium eka silicon means germanium like this eka word he was using this word indicates the elements which we will discover later can be fitted in the vacant space and then novel gases were discovered in that time and that uh, but he placed some uh, space he kept some space for the arrangement of novel gases and the vacant shapes uh, vacant space left was uh, filled up by the elements which were discovered later so these are some important merits of the mendelik periodic tables then what are the demerits of mendelik table the demerits is was that this was uh, like this he was unable to locate the hydrogen in the periodic table then what was the correct position of hydrogen in the table he did not uh, mention then another thing is atomic mass was not regular in the arrangement some cases that lower atomic mass uh, is coming later so these are some demerits another no place for isotopes because hydrogen has three isotopes of protium deuterium and tritium then what are the position of protium deuterium and tritium in the table he did not mention then some different properties elements having different properties are placed in the same group for example manganese was placed with halogens halogen is non metal manganese is metal first placed in the same group and the lanthanides and actinides were not given proper place in the periodic table there is no position of lanthanides actinides separately these were the some drawbacks of mendelik's table then what are the next uh, in this periodic uh, uh, laws were uh, not accepted were not accepted by the modern scientists the scientist uh, that uh, henry musley he he uh, considered that atomic number is the periodic is the periodic properties of the elements that um, henry musley that he made the table is called modern periodic table according to henry the musley properties of element the physical and chemical properties of elements are the periodic function of their atomic number not atomic mass that means he consider atomic number as the periodic function of the elements that's why he arrange the elements in increasing order of atomic number but not atomic mass and uh, that uh, he using this he, the prediction of properties of elements could be made more precision than by taking atomic mass so this is the very importance of uh, modern periodic uh, law that is henry musley law that periodic properties of elements are the the properties of elements are the periodic function of their atomic number then what are the features that the whole table that uh, consist of um, seven periods horizontal row that is seven periods and 18 groups group 1 to group 18 and the whole table is divided into four blocks s p d and f blocks divided into four blocks a s p and d f blocks 
and AS block, D block and F block mainly contain metals and your P block mainly contain non-metals and the elements uh, classification of blocks depend upon the last electron entering the subcell when it is entering the S subcell it is called S block element when it will be entering P subcell last electron then that is called P block like this the will be divided into four blocks S, P, D and F F block elements all are metals these are called lanthanides and actinides and metal and non-metals and metallers are also placed separately both metal non-metals and metallers are placed separately we can easily identify their position in the tables then you see this is the modern period table you see it has been given different colors so that to identify the nature of metal whether metal non-metals and metalloids whether it is a um, S block element, these are called S block element, this is your D block element, this is your P block elements and this is your F block elements, 4 block, first 2 group is S block, then 3rd to 12, this is called D block, then 13 to 18, this is P block and the below, below the table, these 2 series are called lanthanides and actinides, these are called F blocks. So, whole the table divided in 4 blocks, S, S, P, D and F like these four blocks they divided. Then the if you discuss the each each groups, the first group are called alkali metals, except hydrogen, these are called alkali metals, except hydrogen, except hydrogen, this is called alkali metals, and these are lithium, sodium, potassium, rubidium, cesium, and francium. These are S block element, the outermost eluton configuration is general eluton configuration is NH1. That is very important, NH1. NH1 means last electron, last subcell contain one electron. 1S1, 2S1, 3S1, 4S1, 5S1, 6S1, 7S1, like this. They are uh, containing single electron each elements in the tables and the second group uh, second group is called alkaline earth metals because they they are they are oxides and hydroxide are alkaline nature and available in the earth crust they have they have two electron in their outermost cell that means they contain two electron in their outermost cell barium magnesium calcium strontium barium and radium these are the alkaline earth metals and uh, they have uh, two electron in their outermost cell these are called alkaline earth metals and the general electron configuration is ns2 so second group contain ns2 and first group that is alkaline metal contain ns1 alkaline earth metal ns2 the general electronic configuration and alkaline metals are more reactive than alkaline earth metals if you see the reactivity it is more reactive than alkaline earth metals then d block D block mainly um, group 3rd to group 12, group, this is group 3rd and this is group 12. Oh, group 3rd to group 12 all are called D block elements and D, you see the D block again divided into 5 series, 1st series, 2nd series, 3rd series and 4th series. 1st series, 1st series is called that uh, 3D series. 2nd series 4D series, 3rd series 5D series and 4th series 6D series. All are called transition elements or D block elements. That means the last electron of these elements enter into the D subcell, not S and P. The last electron enter in D subcell, that's why these are called D block elements. And uh, these D block elements, the, what are the characteristics that these elements let us discuss. The characteristic is all have high melting and boiling point. The melting point, boiling point is very high. Then these compounds are also very good magnetic behavior. That means paramagnetic and diamagnetic behavior. Paramagnetic means attracted towards magnet and diamagnetic means repelled by the magnet. Then are hard and possess high density. They are very hard and possess high density means heavy. They, they also behave as a catalyst then so variable valency and oxidation states their, their oxidation states are very they show variable oxidation states variable valency they produce color so they produce color compounds and their oxide and hydroxide are less basic 
their oxides and hydroxides are less basic and they produce complex compounds. Mainly they produce complex compounds and the general electron confusion is N minus 1, D 1 to 10 and NS 1 to 2. Then the general electron confusion of these elements is N minus 1, D 1 to 10 and NS 1 to 2. This is NS, NS 1 to 2 and N minus 1, D 1 to 1 to 10. Okay? This is your So this is called, this is called <coughs> the, the, the transition elements, the general electron component is N minus 1, D 1 to 10 and NS 1 to 2. That means D, inner D subcell contain 1 to 10 electrons and outer uh, so S subcell contain 1 to 2 electrons. So this is the general electron in confusion that properties of transition elements. Then Next is P block elements. P block elements mainly group 13 to group 18. These six groups 13 to 18 all are called P block elements. The last electron enter into P subcell. Their electron composition is that is for example 13 NS2 NP1, 14 NS2 NP2, 15 NS2 NP3 like this and 18 is NS2 NP6. So like this, the, their general electron composition of each group is like this 13 means ns2 np1 means p carry 1 14 means ns2 np2 the like this these are the general electron composition of each group group 13 to 18 are called p block elements and the 13 group are called boron family then carbon family nitrogen family oxygen family fluorine family and your helium family but boron family has no specific name carbon family has no specific name Nitrogen family are called pinkogen, oxygen family are called chalcogen, and fluorine family are called halogen, and helium family are called noble gases. So some groups has a specific name. These last last three groups, last four groups, they have specific name like pinkogen, chalcogen, halogen, and noble gases. And you see the color. From color also we can know the their nature. This uh, that yellow color, this uh, block, these uh, cells, these are metals, and the green, this green color indicates metalloids, and this pink color indicates non-metals. So from the color also we can identify what is the nature of metals, what nature of elements, whether metal, non-metal, or metalloids. So these are very important characteristic characteristic of modern periodic table we can easily identify the the nature of metals then if you see the if you discuss the properties of p block elements their properties like this um, uh, these are all p block elements because the last electron electrons enter in p subcell except helium although helium is placed with the p block but the last electron of helium enter in s subcell this is an exception but why helium placed with noble gases because these properties similar with noble gases then uh, this block is having elements from group 13 to 18 group 13 to 18 are called six groups are called p block elements they are generally already have discussed that general electron conversion is ns2 np1 to 6 s will be fulfilled but p will be incomplete 1 to 6 13 is NS2 NP1, 14 is NS2 NP2, like this, these groups are, they, are, they have general electron confusion. It contains all three types of elements, metal, non-metals and metalloids, already discussed. And these groups contain elements in three states that, uh, all three states that solid, liquid and gaseous states are available, except first member, except first member, if you see that, uh, except first member, Except this first member, except first member, all having variable valency. Except this first member, all having 
variable valency. That's why except fast member, all elements show variable valency. And they have a very stronger oxidizing agent. Oxidizing agent means they have a high tendency to gain electron. That's why all non-metals have high greater or stronger oxidizing power. So they have high stronger oxidizing character and showing catenation means catenation means the forming long chain ring chain compound that's why this is very very good qualities very good characteristic of um, p block elements they show catenation property and also they produce allotropes like carbon had two type. carbon has two allotropes that is diamond and graphite like this so they produce allotropes and most of them produce acidic oxides are they are non metals that's why they produce acidic oxides and the nitrogen family are called pincogen already have told you these are called pincogen because suffocation due to suffocation what it is called pincogen oxygen family are called chalcogen because they are forming ore so oxides and sulfides ore group 17 this is called group 16 oxygen family called chalcogen group 15 is called pincogen group 17 is called halogen halogen means they are forming sea salt Chlorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, and statine. Oxygen family, oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, and polonium. And nitrogen family, nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, bismuth. Anyway, you have to remember the all group members. So it will be very much helpful to your study. Then group 18, all are called noble gases. These are also called rare gases. These are called also inert gases. These are helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. Okay. For example, you see like this helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, radon. These are called noble gases. Fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine, astrazine, these are called halogens. Oxygen, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, polonium, these are called chalcogens. Nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, antimony, bismuth, these are called pintogen, suffocation word. So like this, these are the characteristic of P block elements. Then come to F block elements. F block elements, why these are called F block elements? Because the last electron entered in F subset. These are divided in two series, that is 4F series and 5F series. 4F series means last electron entered in 4F subset. 5F series means last electron entered into 5F subset. First series is called lanthanides and second series is called actinides. Now, what are the characteristics of lanthanides? Each carry 14 elements. Each carry 14 elements, selenium to lutetium and these are thorium to laurentium these are you have to remove you have to practice their names cerium prasonium neodymium promethium samarium europium gadolinium terbium dispersonium holonium iridium uh, that is thorium then ytterbium and lutetium these these are called lanthanides what are the actinides thorium protactinium uranium neptunium protonium americium califon Curium, Berkelium, Californium, Einsteinium, Fermium, Medallium, Nobelium, and Laurentium. These are called actinoids. And what are the characteristics of lanthanides and actinides, F block elements? Let us discuss. They all are heavy metals. They are heavier. And the first series is called lanthanides, second series is called actinoids. And the general electron configuration of both series is N minus 2, F1 to 14, and N minus 1. N minus 1, Du 0 to 1 and Ns 2. So each uh, that uh, both have F, D and S subcell electron, they carry electron in F subcell, D subcell, S subcell. That's why F is incomplete and D is also incomplete and S is fully filled. So it is inner trans inner orbitals that is N minus 2, F 1 to 14, then N minus 1, D 0 to 1 and Ns2. So this is the general electron configuration of lanthanides and actinides. The last electron enter into N minus 2 F subset. That's why these are called F block elements. And they have high melting and boiling point. They exhibit variable valency and variable oxidation state like transition metals. They produce color compound like transition metals. And they these actinides, these actinides are radioactive in nature. These actinides are radioactive in nature and um, these compared to lanthanides and actinides, actinides are almost all are radioactive nature. Then if you compare with tension metals, F block elements, lanthanides, actinides are more reactive than tension metals. Remember this very important thing. 
lanthanides and actinides are more reactive compared to tungsten metals and they are more heavier compared to tungsten metals. So these are some important characteristics of S block, P block, D block and F block elements and their individual group elements, what are the characteristics, what are the you know, common name of these group elements we discussed. So, okay, thank you all.